back for some late night painting. Um, <laughs> and the music has started. The combat is here. No, um, we are gonna paint some more Marvel Crisis Protocol figures. Um, I haven't, I'm sorry I've been so lackluster with the painting videos. I'm gonna definitely get on my schedule that I talked about. So next week, we will get into the proper rhythm and proper routine uh, for my painting regimen. So we're gonna have a different model company spotlighted every night. Uh, so both projects and things I'm working on. So you guys will get a solid painting video every night and then we'll move into the others. Um, as we were doing, uh, we were painting up, uh, again, in celebration of Marvel and all things Marvel, since we have a killer epic uh, season finale of WandaVision coming up. Ah, that's why my camera was doing weird stuff. It was um, not focusing properly. Um, so we're doing, we're painting right now Thanos' generals. Uh, actually, pretty close to getting this one done. Um, we're going to go into our closer cam to give you guys a better look at what we're working on. Um, and then I'm hoping if we finish him up tonight, we can get on to... Why is it doing that? Stop. Um, we'll get on to Abin, uh, Abin Mall. We'll get into painting him a little bit as well because we have very little left on him. So we're going to go right for the big areas right away. Which is that base. And then we're going to do some detail work on the axe. In fact, I'm going to use, like I think, a much bigger... And of course, if you guys have questions, comments, any of those things, please do not hesitate to bust them out. Um, if you want to talk about Marvel stuff, if you want to talk about uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol, the game. You know, whatever that might be. Do not hesitate. to throw something on the chat and actually make sure that I'm good here. Ha. Huh. There we go. Yeah, my uh, my headphones were pulling on my head while I was trying to paint. So I'm just going for big area covering. Just get this all painted. And what I find with the contrast paints is if you guys tend to go for a larger brush you will get a lot less, um, a lot less of the, and that actually, I did, that was a happy accident, but that actually looks pretty cool, which is, it looks, it kind of looks like a stain. Uh, you'll notice that you'll get less brush strokes if you're using bigger brushes with the contrast paints. Hopefully you guys like the epic music. And of course, in the chat, you can see what music I am playing. Like I said, if you guys have comments, questions, please don't throw them up. I even questions about just painting techniques or other stuff like that. Again, I'm just I'm I'm actually experimenting with these brushes. I got these brushes as a gift. They're pretty cool. And I'm kind of experimenting to see how they work with specifically the contrast paints. Um I was using them for larger like scenery painting stuff, which if I can get my setup down here a little bit more uh, together, I want to start maybe showing you guys some of the scenic pieces that I'm painting. But I gotta get a lot of stuff cleaned up down here first. see we have some folks watching thank you so much for joining us and again we're working on marvel crisis protocol models and i'm, I'm just uh getting the basing done i love it's one of the things i love about this game too 
is they give you such nice elaborate basing. Um, so you have, uh, you know, everything is sculpted bases. So you have really nice, attractive bases to uh, to start with versus other games, you know, that just give you kind of a generic black piece of plastic, whatever, and you know, you know, one, one could argue, well, the reason they do that is because then it's nice. You can customize your bits or your pieces or what you want to do, and I get that, but as somebody who sometimes wants to, you know, definitely wants to paint and definitely wants to get things in there, but you want to, like, not have to overpaint everything. I'm just going to switch to a smaller brush because as much as I like that brush for area, you notice it's doing a lot of staining. I don't want it to stain too much. But this also is... Oh, jeez. I am doing a number on this tonight. I don't know why. Everything seems like it's off tonight. Um, maybe it's the way I'm sitting. I don't know. Can you guys hear the mic pretty well, or am I coming in? What I was going to say was, this also has to do with a little bit of how um, how the model was primed. Um, I've talked about this a couple of times, but I, you know, where I live, the temperature fluctuates. So, you know, we, we have the proper four seasons. So, um, you know, I'm in that area where it is very, very cold. So priming has been a challenge at best. Uh, with all this stuff so you know when I go to try to prime it the primer there we go now I'm getting better control and you guys are getting a little bit of a better angle on this I'm gonna go through this with another color but I'm just trying to base out the rest of it my goal is to use the contrast colors as a little bit more of a basing agent so that maybe, just maybe, if I were to uh, put another color on top of this, it might look a little better. It might look a little bit more decent because right now it's not looking the best way that I would like it to. Um, but we will, uh, we will definitely take a look and see. touch-up paint in some of the areas here and again like I said if you guys have any questions about Marvel Crisis Protocol the game uh, the models or just uh, you know other loose ends like just like I said painting in general oh, I'm doing real bad on this model I'm, I'm sorry, guys. It's just easier for me to do these little grooves on the floor. I will 100% get the model back up in just a moment. I'm just putting a little bit more paint in those grooves of those uh, track lines. Because this particular, for these bases, they make it seem like there's a, you know, like a, like a train or trolley track. And there, wow. This model also is a little awkward because of the way he's standing. It's actually a little hard for me to get into certain areas that I want to get into, but I'm just trying to give it a little bit more of a, a darker tone in there. I'll do the same thing with the top, but you guys can see it brings a lot of contrast in there, and then I'm going to go over that top bit with another color. So I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit. And then, obviously, once I do, once I lay that color in, you'll start to see that we'll need to do some touch-ups on the yellow um, and a few other things. So, so I'm just going to do... We're gonna we're gonna do some more to this too. We're just basing. I'm just basing out. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm 
just basing out that silver. And like I said, do not be shy. Throw up anything that comes to mind on the chat. Anything that you might be thinking or going into. Yeah, and I could already see, like, it's like, oh, geez, I totally went and got the wrong color. Um, I, I went into the... Yeah, man, I am, I'm a little off today. That's why we were a little late with me getting this video up or doing a stream of painting because I've just had a, uh, a little bit of an interesting day, a little bit of an interesting time. So I'll let that dry, but we'll do, we're gonna do some more treatment to that to make it look a little bit more authentic. I need to find my other um, bigger, um, I think that's another piece to it. And I think also my camera, I'm just gonna move my camera like this because I think that'll help. Yeah, there you go. Now you guys have a better angle. It's just everything on my desk got like really, really messed up. All right, so we'll move that there with we'll this here. There we go. Now, um, now I feel like I'm back. And I wanted to do silver on those uh, little details because I thought that would be an excellent thing to do. I'm just going to turn this also. So you guys get a better uh, a better recording of me, hopefully. And like I said, so sorry that the video was so late tonight. I know that's going to... Get, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. Like I said, he's very, very done. We're probably, like I said, we'll just have to do a little bit of touch up on him, but not much. You know, we have to get these few little areas painted and then. I did ask them to not give me any copyrighted music, so I very much hope. I don't know why, but this all seems like Final Fantasy type music. See, this is where it gets really tricky because I got to get inside of there. So I'm going to try to, like, this is where I I go with the theory of, like, trying to, to overload the brush a little bit to get into those areas so that. I can see that sight line and I can try to get that area pretty painted. Um, I'm just going to give that a minute. We're going to do the same thing to that, and then we'll start doing our touch-ups on him to get him a little bit more, you know, in line with what we're going to do. I 
Okay. Sorry, guys. Just had to check one little thing. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so it looks like we got that upper part pretty well done. You know, and I always tell people when you're doing models, you know, you are doing You are painting something that is three-dimensional. So, you know, you have to look at it from every angle to make sure that you are, in fact, getting it the way that you would like it to be and the way that it is proper. So, and I apologize for a little bit of the boggling focus. My camera today, I don't know why, it seems to be like doing some weird stuff when it comes to focusing. So I don't know if it's the positioning, if it's where I placed it, but it seems to be like just doing weirder things. So if you are intrigued uh, or want to see more of things like this um, while you are watching, if you're new to the channel and you've never watched this before, you should definitely subscribe um, or should say follow because I don't have subscriptions. I always think that I'm on YouTube um, and you should sign up for notifications so you know when we are live. So you can come and join us and even more so fabulous possibly contribute to it and you know let us know what's on your mind because uh like i said whether you want to talk about marvel whether you want to talk about marvel crisis protocol the actual tabletop game that these characters are from i should say that these models are from um you know everything is on the table or if you want to just talk about hobbying painting techniques um if you're working on a particular project You know, I am always ears for that type of stuff. Because I've helped quite a few people with like different projects that they're having or, you know, sometimes where to start or, um, you know, what primer to use, what materials you might think of, you know, what's a, what's a good technique if you're trying to achieve a certain look to something you know we've we've talked about quite a few things on this show actually uh, on these uh painting sessions and like i said to everybody i will we will get into a more rhythm to these so that there is a schedule it is not so random and haphazard as it has been um because I will be the first to admit that our, our times that I'm on and stuff have been, you know, very sporadic. And I don't try to do that. But um, I'm just working out the kinks of getting a schedule together. And I'm also working out a way to get current models of certain companies. So I'm, I'm a little bit in the process of figuring that out. So it's taken me a little bit of time to get all those ducks in a row, per se. get his uh, his feet in order here because when we when I did the the pavement I realized that his his toes were very barren same thing with the back of his nails I got to get those on under control as well I may even have to re-whiten his nails and redo them um, as I'm noticing so this is a little bit more of that uh, priming issue I was talking about which has created a situation where he almost has like uh, what's the word like oh sorry he's he's almost got like flocked feet so I may have to go in and just re-whiten those nails just to make them look better because right now from far away the, the color is very blurred. It's very blended. You know, it's a little bit better on the rock itself, but then, like, I went in a little too much with the gray, so I'm going to have to do some, like, little touch-ups. 
Everything else looks good. It's just his feet. His feet right now have a little bit of opportunity. So I'm just going through and just tidying up some of those little, little tiny cracks. Yeah, moving forward, most of my other Marvel Crisis Protocol models won't look like these guys, like with the flocking problem, because I deliberately waited for a uh, for a day where the weather was a little bit better so that the primer would not do these things that it did. Um, I'm just going to darken that a little bit with some more paint. I mean, overall, he does look good. Like, I'm not... And I haven't really worked with his feet yet, but I'll, I'll get... I'll... You know, so it looks pretty good because we're getting some darker shadows in there. So it doesn't look horrible. And I said it before, one of the one of the things that's a little challenging about him is he's got he's a little bit of a hulky kind of character, so he's got a little bit of a stance, which is very cool. But it also does not lend itself very well to like getting into some of the tighter corners. So you're seeing me sort of having to move it around a lot and jar him around a lot. So for folks for folks that are watching, I'm sorry if it's a little, uh, you know, off-putting. I'm trying to not shift them around as much as I can, but it's hard to get to some of the details without doing that. So, and I'm just doing while I'm down here doing this. I'm just giving him a little bit of. Um, little bit of shadowing by the cuff of the pants so it looks like it has a little bit more dramatic shadowing which usually looks pretty good I don't know what you guys think I think it looks pretty damn good um, I'm looking while we're on the subject of touch-ups I'm just like looking around to see any other areas that yellow spot right behind the ear we had to fix Just gonna make that a little darker you know I, I, I say it all the time when we're painting white primed models are so hard because you will see all of the mistakes you will see everything you'll see all of the little mistakes pop out to get into that hand. Oh, he's a, he's not in focus, sorry. So I'm just making sure that all of the yellow on that hand is good to go before I go in there with uh, the, the skeleton horde to get those nails done.
and I'm going to put a little bit of staining inside of the purple so that it gives it a little bit more of a sheen or a shine. I'm going to put that back. Um, where is the, oh, I'm going to use the skeleton horde. That's right. And like I said, if you guys find this cool or interesting or find the talking good as well, uh, and you wanted more of this, uh, as I was saying before, you know, we're going to get to a more structured schedule uh, with all of the painting content. So I'm going to be doing... I'm going to be doing a little bit more on the week. So I'll be promoting. Uh, I'll be promoting specific companies on specific days, so I'll have different projects. Um, so you'll have my goal is to have a painting video at least uh, one painting video a day um, is my goal. Uh, there's a twofold reason for my uh, robust painting schedule. Uh, the, one of which you know you guys will laugh probably when you hear it because it's going to be very practical. One of them is. Uh, if I were to show you guys a aerial view in the room that I paint, or the, the few rooms that I paint, um, you'd probably laugh at me with the amount of stuff that has to be painted, the amount of stuff that has to be built, the amount of stuff that just needs to be done, period. Um, that's why I'm going to be doing a more robust painting schedule, uh, for that reason. And I do, again, apologize if... My camera angles are really bad. I'm trying my best with this guy. He's just got, he's a tough customer. He's got a lot of, and like I said, if you guys have any questions or comments, please throw those in there. And uh, is everybody hearing my audio okay? Is the music too loud? You know, any of those things you want to tell me in the, in the chat, I am all ears. So I welcome technical expertise and potentially technical uh, help. I always do. I like feedback. I like when you guys talk to me. I think it's always helpful. But we're going to have more robust videos as well. Ooh, I see that I have a message. And like I said, if, if any of you out there have questions about, you know, what we're painting or questions about the game, um, it's a really, really awesome, fun game, and the models are unbelievably cool from it. So if you've ever thought about, you know, trying out a uh, Marvel-based miniature game, you really can't go wrong uh, with something like Marvel Crisis Protocol. And then if you want to see... Uh, I don't want to call it a lesser game, because it's not, but if you want to see a different take on a tabletop game for this um you can take a look at i did some unboxing of uh hero clicks models um that is another really cool game that also has some really awesome mechanics to it um and and you know what i'll, I'll go on a limb and say that like um You know, like Marvel Crisis Protocol, it's uh, it's got some of the other nice benefits, which are um, it's pretty easy to get the base rules. Um, so I call it sim simple mechanics to start. Um, but then what I also like about Hero Clicks is that it's like Marvel Crisis Protocol in the sense that it is um, very cost effective. So uh, if you want a game that you can get into that does not cost you a lot to start, um, Hero Clicks is also like Marvel Crisis Protocol in that respect. Where it is 100% um, a quick investment and uh, what a lot of people, you know, will also like about Marvel, uh, about uh, Hero Clicks is that all of the models in that game are pre-painted uh, you play on a flat board with terrain or rendering so unlike other tabletop games you definitely are starting out with a much easier time from a hobby standpoint because there is not really a 
there is no hobbying to it. So it's not like these games where, uh, you know, painting or, or there is some, some hobby aspect to the game. So I know for a lot of people that is another, you know, very nice selling point for hero clicks because they're like, cool. All I like, literally all I have to do is just buy a couple of pieces and I'm good to go versus some of these other games where you have to really expend, you know, a pretty good amount of time, you know, depending on the complexity of the models or the force. Um, but you might have to spend a little bit of time painting a little bit of time, you know, assemb obviously assembling models. Um, you know, again, depending on how elaborate depending on how elaborate you want your setting to be or, or, or other things to be. You know, you, you may come into that, that discussion with yourself a little bit differently. Um, but like I said, hero clicks alleviate you of the need the need to do all of that. And then I'm gonna stain our city great so what that's going to do is it should give it a little bit of a like worn metal look versus it being really shiny because we don't want a you know super duper shiny um sewer great so this will stain it or darken it a little bit more. So now it has a little bit more character to it. It's got a little bit more sheen to it. guys it's just easier it's a little easier for me to do that on the ground instead of holding it up i'll show you what i did though and what you'll see is i just took the the stain and i just went into the grooves of it so it gave it a little bit more definition um to the actual grate and then the other part i'm going to do i can 100 percent show you guys oh don't worry which is I'm gonna pick a nice dark color for and I'm just gonna do so we're gonna to start to to build in just some of the, the darker cracks on the base. So that they're a little bit more pronounced. There's not many of them, but that's gonna give the base a little bit more character. And like I said, normally when I do this stuff I'm about to do, it, it goes a little bit nicer. The, the, the a priming issue that I talked about. Uh, it is causing it to be a little bit more um, I guess the word is less precise like it is it is causing a little bit of variation in how I would normally do this but yeah so what you guys are seeing is I'm just painting in those darker shadows with that darker color so that it's gonna alleviate it's gonna give um, the rock It's 
try I'm trying to give that rock a little bit more trying to give it a little bit more of the comic treatment so it looks a little bit more bold um, which you guys will notice it's kind of part of my style when I paint I like to make things appear or look bolder or more bright than they are. And I'm actually using this. I'm, I'm cheating the, the dark a little bit because like I said before, I because of the priming that I did, it's, it's playing off of him a little bit differently than I would have liked. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of giving him... I'm giving him a little bit more of a facelift so that... When you look at that line, it'll be nice and dark to bounce off of that. Because, like I said, my uh, my priming on that, which I'm going to have to do some white to clean that up because it's too dark. It doesn't look yellow. It looks like another color. Um, it doesn't look as good as it should have. Sort of doing the same thing there, just so it looks a little bit. It doesn't look terrible, but I definitely have to fix a little bit of the bottom. It doesn't look like super duper horrible, but it's not like my finest work either. This is kind of like a rip off of Batman. <laughs> So I'm gonna redefine uh, these these the the toes, so we can redo those, and those will be nice and look good. And that's what's cool about the contrast paints. You just have to get like a basic white, and you literally just have to go in and you can go back over areas that you felt were not that were not good. And I just, I, I put it on very light and very, very loose, very watery. Because what I find happens is, is then it's very easy for me to, you know, just throw in that color and just build that back. So I'm just doing a little bit of touch up on the bottom. as you can see I was a little bit haphazard with my with my brush so I'm just going in and saying where you know where do I have some opportunities with that where I'm like oh that that's not really yellow it's it's So now we have those areas that I fixed and cleaned up. Sorry guys, I'm just looking at where we have some opportunity. So like here's another good example, like very hard to see that detail. So 
I'm just going to redefine that nail a little bit in a better way. Now, in this case, like something like this, that that was actually I'm going to I'm going to ding the model builders on this one because it is the way they molded the hand. It is very hard to know where his where his thumb is in in that. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Yeah, and I said, it's funny. I said, oh, we're going to just jump over to the other guy. We've already been doing this for 40 minutes. Which I think is amazing. The fact that I literally just said that. Because I'm like, oh, we're going to finish this. Like, oh, this guy's almost, like, done. And it just shows that, like... You know, if you have pride in your models, something you think will take a very little amount of time. Now, I'll probably have to go over that again. So, what I'm doing now is I'm just. I'll have to go over that again because now it's like very, very white. So you can see that back leg is working a little bit better. And this is not going to be a problem because it's going to be under the foot anyway. But like, yeah, what normally happens is I will have to, I'll have to go back. I'll, I'll have to go back and redo that area because you're going to see that when I put this on, it's going to, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb a little bit because what's happening is. And this is, again, that, that base issue that I was talking about. Yeah. What you guys are going to see is that it actually is um, just sitting on top of that white. Because that white is much whiter. Than what it is. But what I'm going to use it as is I'm going to use it as an opportunity to do some some like shading on the model so what's going to happen is i'm going to try to use that as a natural bone in there to then do a better job of hiding that so it will look a little better but you guys will see like once i put another coat on it It'll it'll start to look more natural. It'll start look it'll start to look more like it's fading in to the other foot. Now, if I start to get that happening, where it's like orangey orange like that, then I may have to do something else. I'll have to figure out another way to fix that. Like that worked out really well. It's weird. The yellow in particular, it, it can sometimes come off a little bit more like orange rather than yellow. I notice with this guy. Oh, whoops. I'm just trying to get like a little bit. So I may have to improvise like a mixed color. I might have to mix the white with that just to get that to look a little bit better. But right now it looks better as in it's, um, it's more controlled. But yeah, a lot of the issues with, with the yellow is ha it has to do with the way that the model is primed. Which is why for any of you folks that are out there priming models, like if you come across if you don't you know, if you don't have the ability to have a um a spray box in your home or a place to 
to do spray paint or to do priming, you really got to be careful about the weather. And I, I kick myself every day that I prime these, but I was like, ugh, I kind of have to get them done. And it's like a catch ray too. So the damage is done. I mean, like I could definitely maybe strip them down, but I'll just make it work. I mean, I don't think they look horrible, but like that looks really bad. So I'll have to, I'm going to have to fix that, but I'll, I'll get myself there in just a minute. So like I said, what that'll end up being more than likely is it'll be me mixing in a white based yellow and then probably going back over the contrast paint with it. See, but what, what you're gonna see that's gonna look real good is this because now that I re-whitened it, that color should be much more pronounced. So it should look now, also, it should be said that one of the ways I could have not had this problem is not using Cortex White, the very strong white, as the uh, recovery. So if I didn't fix the, if I had not fixed the problem with a white that was very, very white, I probably wouldn't, it wouldn't look as white as it does, meaning I should have I should have used the same base primer that it used. And now all I'm doing here is I'm just going back over this to try to give those fingers a little bit more definition. Like I said, this will look real good because Like I said, does it look horrible? Just that looks really bad. So let's uh, let's fix that now, real quick. So, like I said, what it's going to turn into for that is it's going to be a mixture of color. I'm just going to make. So all I did was I just took some of the white, mixed it in with the contrast, and then there we go. So quite honestly, this fix that I just did, this is how I, moving forward, I'm gonna be fixing a little bit more. Especially if I have this particular issue again, because now at least a more opaque color went in there and it's a much better like foil mix to what's there so it's not like a glaring problem with the model like we had just a minute ago so again that was just doing one scoop of white I'm actually going to use this Four more of it because I want to use this to fix some other errors that I had and to bring back some of the yeah so we're gonna we're gonna use this for even this side so that it doesn't seem so uh, jarring that color yeah see now now his foot is starting to look much better with that new improvised color so again that was just like one scoop one little scoop of white with um, with then uh, two of the contrast color, and I've done this before because sometimes uh, a good another good uh, one is the the flesh tone. The uh, the flesh tone that they have on this uh, the contrast paint is not the greatest sometimes where it will make um, on base contact it will actually make characters way way too dark I 
I've noticed. I'm just gonna use this to split the difference in this color. I'm just gonna bring that in a little bit, and this should fix some of my splotchiness of his uh, of his skin in places that I feel. I feel some of it I like, but some of it like it creates texture. But then other areas, I do not like it as much. But I've, I've worked with most of it to make it look good, so. But yeah, that's, that's much, much better on the feet now. Much, much better. So we can, we can totally cover that up and then just blend that all in. So it's got a much nicer mixture. So that was a really good. And I knew I was gonna have to do that. I knew I was I was barking a little up the wrong tree with with the way that I handled it. But I just wanted to make sure before I did it. Just gonna get that nice, nice lighter tone in there. Yeah, let's do it up here too. Yeah, so you can see much better now. That's nice and uniform using that white so that's good that's good we can get we can even get a little bit of a, uh, a shadow on here and I can I can just get some of my defects out of here and just use that to make him a little bit more dynamic all right let's use I'm gonna use this color because this is like perfect we're just putting some little little touch-ups in there let's get that around the ah there we go Get that around the hand. Nice. All right, cool. So now I don't think his feet stink. I'm just gonna use this. Touch up right there and a little touch up. Sorry guys. Again, I'm I'm just I'm just trying to use my uh, using the downward angle because I can see him a little bit better when I hold him to the side. I don't see him as well. And what I did was I just wanted to get a little bit more of that tone in there because I was not as happy. I'm just using this to sort of glaze a little bit and just to make some areas a little smoother and just to get like some of that darkerness out. So he doesn't look like he's got this like weird skin condition, which I feel like in my original paint, like he's got a little bit of that going on, but that's okay too, because he's an alien, he's got different skin, but you can see, I really got to redo this. Yeah, I may have to redo all of it because let me mix more of this. Yeah. Next yeah, this is what this is exactly what happens to me. So I find one thing. I don't want to go too, too crazy, but like, I'm just realizing how uneven his painting is. So I'm like, I'm just trying to take. I don't want to ruin everything. I don't want to ruin like a bunch of natural, nice things that I have, but thinking that that's going to be the way to go because it just looks yeah it just looks so like bad right now okay, so i just want to like repaint all of this there we go so that now that looks much much more uniformed you know and just and just nicer as opposed to this sort of splotchy mess that i created with his skin tone, so I'm just I'm just going in and giving him like 
It's like it's like applying burnt ointment to him. I feel like he's like burnt. <laughs> Doing, I'm just making it uniformed. Take all of just want to tone down some of the the multi you know the multicolored stuff that's going on. So like let's get all of this on the same page. So that looks a lot better now. Excuse me, guys. Oh, Lord Almighty. Ow. What I love is I was going to spend more time on the axe. Than I was anything else. And I didn't spend any time on the axe. I just have been spending all this time painting him. But you can see, oh jeez, you know, I think he looks good. I don't think he looks bad. There's definitely more that I want to do. There's just like different things that I know I want to do. To the bottom. Just going into the base. And I'm just adding a darker color to next to the tracks. So I'm just trying to. I want it to look a little bit more like traditional train tracks or or tram tracks to be more uh, specific but like I said one of the problems with this particular figure 
is that he's like right up against where the tracks are so it's so hard to paint in there but if we did our jobs right what should happen is you know it should look a lot darker Now all I'm doing is I'm just adding, like like I was saying before, the little like debris markers, you know, little chips in the sidewalk, little things like that. And you guys can see them. And again, that just gives the base a little bit more dynamic to it, and it makes it look like a dirty sidewalk. So it's very, very cool. And as always, if you guys are finding this entertaining or want to see more, consider following the channel. And it's funny because, like I said, the axe was the thing I really wanted to finish. trying to look and see what sorry guys I'm trying to look to see what areas of the axe I have to still touch up because when I first looked at the axe I was like Oh, I painted it, but then I started looking at it and I found all these like little holes. So I'm like, you know, I think, I think I need, I think I've I think I've said it a few times already with this model. I really I should have probably should have painted this in assembly because it's super hard to get to the areas that I have to paint. Like it is not easy at all to get to like where I have to paint this axe. It's not easy to get to any of the areas. Like it is it is it is tough goings at most junctions of this model. It's you know, it's it's just they have them so the stance is so tilted down that it's really really hard. Now, also, I'm making it harder on myself because I'm not going and getting this other gold that I really should be using. I'm trying to really like use the last of this gold in this paint pod 
which is making the consistency of it not the right thing. So I'm trying to like... Yeah, this is not... It's not working out the way I want it to. I think I think it's time to say quits to this. I mean, I have other projects I have to do with this gold, so you know I'm gonna stop fighting my own paint and, and start using the right stuff. Cause wait until you guys see the difference when I open up this gold in particular. Oh, I don't know. This gold might not be good. Shoot. This gold might have actually been, it might be worse than this other gold. Nope, it's beautiful. It's nice and liquidy. And the gold paints are weird. They separate, which is so odd. All the metallic paints do that. Okay. So now that I have a much better... That's that's what the gold's supposed to do. So it's supposed to be, you know, the way to describe the gold paints that GW makes is like they should they should apply, they should be extremely watery and they should apply like like liquid metal essentially. Is what you should be getting when you're when you're using them. So it should be very little effort. And they do that on purpose with these because you're tending to do... You know, you're, you're tending to do details with this. So you want something that's going to apply nicely to your model. You don't want something that's going to clump up or be, you know... Sorry, I'm doing that off camera. I apologize. I didn't realize I wasn't on camera yet. So you can see already, like, the degree of control that I have on this paint now is so much better than what I was working with. Now, if my pod would just stay open, that would be even cooler. Yeah, but like I said, you'll you'll see the difference. Like you'll see how much easier it's gonna be for me to just like shove the brush. So much easier. So much easier to do that than what I was doing. See, it just shows like it, it just shows like once you have the right paint, the right brush. See, now it looks so much better. And that took me like two seconds at the time because I went and got the right gold. So. Instead of sitting there trying to fight the other gold. And then you guys can start to see, like, now that that other stuff started drying, see how much better his feet look now that I went and did that? So now everything looks a lot better. He doesn't have that splotchy skin really anymore. So it looks a lot more uniformed than it did a minute ago. 
which is much, much better. And then for this, what my thought process was going to be with this stuff didn't really do much to it okay so that that experiment didn't really work out so if I wanted to do anything I'd have to do like a lighter red I have to paint a little bit more red on there but I would have I would have to do a lighter red Which is fine. cleaned up okay so all I'm doing there is just getting a few things on there cleaned up I'm gonna let that stir and be awesome for a minute while I go into we're gonna get uh, yeah let's do stink bite for that So for these areas, like I said, I want, I want to give him a little bit more of an older, Sorry guys, I'm, I, I I promise that we will be better on the next painting video. I've been a really bad painting hostess tonight because I feel like I'm get I'm like showing you half of what I'm doing. I'm showing you. Because like I said, the the challenging part about him as a model. He 
It's just that he's got so much, um, he's in that downward, um, you know, he's in that downward pose. That it just causes me to get cut off a lot from the model. But I think he's looking, I think he looks pretty awesome. Um, we're going to do one thing to the axe, and then I'm going to say that we're probably in the, I mean, maybe I'll just do one more pass in a couple of spots with the, the skeleton horde, but I think, I think I'm going to put him on the table as a done model. I think he's going to be a done guy. Um, I thought we were going to get into our other gentleman over there, but I don't think I'm going to have time to do him today because we spent a little bit more time. There was a more time to to clean him up, to, to, to fix him up. Um, I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, so I'll definitely do a little bit more of the skeleton horde after I do one more thing to the, uh, one more thing to the uh, ax that I wanna do. I'm gonna try one other tactic. Let's see if this uh, if this tactic works. I hope it does. So I'm gonna go a little bit more white on this this one. So I put in just uh, I actually put in um, more white than I did red to do a lighter red. Let's see if I can muscle something up here that I like. See the problem. The problem with the issue with with the uh, the sculpt of this is that as much as I like Atomic Mass games, and I'm usually the first on my on my you know painting videos. To give them a lot of praise. I don't know. They did something to his axe that just... Ah, oh, jeez. No, it's not working. They did something to his axe that just isn't normal. It isn't like the normal way that they do models. So, like, the sculpt, the, the actual sculpt itself was like... Because the idea of what I was trying to do, which I think I somewhat succeeded in, maybe not exactly the way I wanted, was I wanted it to look, oh, sorry. I wanted it to look like there was energy going through it. I don't know if I completely am in love with this, but I think as a front-facing thing, it looks, it makes the axe look a little more interesting. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to leave it. But, um... Yeah, it just, it didn't, it didn't, the axe in general I was not as happy with, I guess is the better way to put it. Like, I tried to do it a little bit more traditional to the combos books, because it is golden, he has a golden axe that he carries around, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm, like, totally 100% sold on it.
Just cleaning that up. That you know, now we're gonna go into the little tiny details, but so now I'm hoping to just do another pass with skeleton horn on a few things, and then we're gonna make it to the next one. And if you guys have been enjoying this and you guys are watching this or watch it even after the fact that we were live and you say, Oh, that was pretty cool. I wish I could see more, you know, consider following the channel. Um, because by following, you'll know exactly when we're live again. Um, you could also sign up for notifications. Another good way to know when we are uh, gonna be on and doing some more painting or game playthroughs or artwork stuff. Um, you only know that if you become a, if you become a uh, follower. Uh, you could also take a look at other social media that I have in the links below. You can check my website, my Patreon. You know, uh, the monetary support is really, really important as well. Um, because that monetary support is how, you know, me uh, can, you know, how I can afford uh, all of the different materials that I use for what I do, for getting the models that you guys see and I review. Um, it hopefully will get me a little closer to my dream of doing this on a more full-time basis for everybody. Um, so I'm just doing little touch-ups. Oh, wow. Again, I apologize, guys, for the, the, the many tilts, twists, and turns. You know, I keep putting the models through. It's just, like I said, this particular model, I don't know what it is about the hands. See, they, they don't usually have that issue or problem, but... As I say, traditionally, I have to go over most of these elements a few times. Um, I'm, this is more the priming issue. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to over compensate a little bit for the priming issue by going over it a couple of times. And I'm looking to see if there's any other like places where and I'm, and I'm sort of cheating a little bit. In the sense that I'm just like trying to fill in. Because like I said, when you're doing white models, you always feel, you always see those like contrast lines. So if you don't paint something fully or if you leave something a little ambiguity, like with a little bit of ambiguity, uh, in a white model, you will you will 100% like just your eye will just gravitate right there. Like you will you will see that mistake immediately because the contrast. That's why, truth be told, if you're starting to paint, I'm actually a firm believer in not doing white models. Um, but if you guys want to start by learning with the contrast paints, which I do recommend because they are very easy to use and they get you very good results very quickly um, with the GW stuff, then you have to do white, white primer. All right. Well, I think we're done with this guy. I am. Oh, whoop. No, we're not. 
We will be done in a minute. I want to go over his teeth one more time. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm like... Alright, so we got his teeth done. Just want to make sure they were painted. Alright, perfect. So I think, like I said, I think he's a little on the rough side. You know, sometimes you just have one model that you don't necessarily get 100% on the hit. I think he looks better. Um, I mean, I, I don't dislike him. I think he looks good. I mean, he looks like the character he's supposed to look like, so I know I did my job. But uh, that's going to put us at a close. And then, like I said, we will get back to painting this fella next time around. So I know for this week, we're, I'm going to keep focusing on Marvel stuff because I do want to paint a few of the Marvel figures just because I'm I got a ton of those to paint. I got a ton, I got I, I mean I have a ton of everything to paint, but I do want to get some Marvel stuff done. Um and then we will get into the more formal painting schedule like I said next week where each each day, basically Monday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday I'm going to be painting a different we'll have a different theme day which is going to be Games Workshop, Marvel Crisis Protocol and Mantic Games, so featuring their products. So Atomic Mass Games would be the, the third uh, for Marvel Crisis Protocol. And we'll be like featuring their products so that I can have more of that stuff happening um, you know, throughout the week. And you'll have painting videos, like I said, every day, which is my goal. Um, allowing us to have um, more dynamic stuff going on. And then, of course, I'll sprinkle in my unboxings, my gameplays, and all that. I'm going to try to give you guys two videos a day that's more reasonable for me. Um, but thank you guys for watching as always. If you found this entertaining, please follow the channel. Uh, sign up for notifications. And like I said, please check out the links below. Uh, there you'll find my Patreon, my website, and um, a tip slash donation button. Other ways to monetarily support us. Now, monetary support goes a long way. Thank you for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. And as always, please stay safe. Wash your hands. And respect all the people of this planet because without everybody working together, we will never solve the problems of tomorrow. Take care, everybody. We'll see you very, very soon.